credit, the final three, as I'm sure you've been able to tell, I am very opinionated about credit and credit score. There are only three more components left to cover to get the full understanding of how your credit score is determined. So the final three are credit age, 10% uh, is types of credit, 15% is credit age, 10% is requests for new credit. So coming in at a whopping 15% is credit age. Credit age essentially is a, a longer credit history will always have a positive effect on your credit score. So it's determined by how long your credit accounts have been open, including the age of your oldest account, the age of your newest account, and an average age of all your accounts. How long specific credit accounts have been open, how long it has been since the account has been used. The credit scoring algorithms calculate the average of how long all your accounts have been open. The average age of accounts is your credit age. So essentially, if you had five credit cards, you'd want to add up all the years you've had your cards, then divide by five to get your credit age. Credit mix. Credit mix. And I'd just like to reiterate, again, your credit score helps lenders determine the risk of lending you more money. So we never... We never want to get money lent to us. Anywho, your credit mix is essentially your ability to manage different types of credit. The two types of credit they like to see a blend of is revolving accounts. <clears throat> revolving accounts. These accounts are accounts that provide you with credit that allows more flexibility regarding the amount paid monthly. So I can credit cards, retail store cards, HELOCs, home equity lines of credit. Then there are installment accounts. And these usually require a fixed payment each month until the balance is paid in full. A few examples of that are mortgages, auto loans, student loans. And as you can see, these are all accounts that typically put us in debt. So we don't care. We could care less about diversifying our debt. Request for new credit is the final piece. And here's a fun part about the credit score, credit score game. You need new credit, but you can't get new credit too fast or you'll be penalized. Lenders will think you're in financial distress if you do it in the short term by opening up all these accounts. And worse yet, if you do get a bunch of new accounts, it'll bring your credit age down. Bummer. Oh, no. Negative effects of new credit. To get a new line of credit, lenders have to inquire into your credit report. And depending on the on a few factors, this can lower your credit score by a few points. Inquiries make little damage to your credit score, but it's still bringing it down. You know, what a shame. It's going to box your credit age if you get a new card because now you have a newborn baby card. And that long credit age you just had is just getting shrunk a little bit. Also, another negative for your new credit request is it, if you get the new card, you'll have a lower limit. And if you use that card, you'll be getting closer to the credit limit, making your credit utilization ratio too high, which could lower your credit score. But you need to do this. You need to have new credit involved. So positive effects is new credit could add another line of credit to your credit mix. And they want to see that you're requesting for new credit, but not too quickly, but not too slowly too. Just the right amount of time, not short term, but not long term, but it's definitely going to affect your credit score either way. But I mean, like I said, you need to get new lines of credit to eventually get that score back up and work your way to that 800, baby. Get that payment history good. Get that credit mix going. Get that credit age over time. Pump those numbers. A side note is checking your credit report won't affect your credit score as long as you order your credit report directly from the credit reporting agency or through an organization authorized to provide credit reports to consumers such as My FICO or Credit Karma. So... What is considered a good credit score? This is taken directly from myfico.com. And as we mentioned, FICO is the head honchos when it comes to credit scores. So your credit scores can range from well, well below 580 to 800. I say 800 plus, I think 850 would be absolutely mental. But um, this is, I've never seen anybody with an 800 or, or, or plus. So but essentially, this is what it looks like. I think if you're in this tier, you'll be fine, but not like you need it. Not like you ever need to do it. My concluding thoughts are, it's so silly. Stay focused on getting out of debt. That's the most important thing we can do for our finances right now. And that's what will be most important moving forward. But now you know how the game works, which is usually half of the battle. Credit score is wrapped around your debt and fluctuates so much. It's wrapped around the idea that you are in debt. And if you can pay your debt, then you can get some more debt. Credit scores absolutely do not benefit you. You want to know how to build wealth, get out of debt so you can use that money you're putting towards your debt to invest. I could care less about your credit score. Credit scores are kind of like social media. Everyone is chasing the approval of the wrong people. And the likes that you get don't actually make you money. They, make, they don't make you any money. There's no monetary value with them. It just temporarily 
makes you feel good. makes you have something that doesn't really, doesn't really matter. So those are my concluding thoughts on credit scores. And I believe you get the full picture of the full five components of, of how credit scores are made up. So that's great information to know. And I'll see you in the next one.